Hey there, Fletcher Mall Things Overlanding here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about this Craft Fuel fridge freezer. This thing's a pretty cool and pretty unique entry into the portable fridge freezer space. I've had quite a few of these things, so when I saw the design and kind of how unique and different it was, I definitely wanted to check it out just to see if it might have a use in my setup. So again, I'm gonna kind of walk you through all the features of this thing, what makes it unique, some of the nice things that it comes with, and as you can tell, it's not just another Chinese knockoff of other fridges you've seen. This is a very unique and individual sort of design, so that's kind of what drew me to it. But again, I'm gonna walk you through all that stuff. I'm gonna kind of give you my initial thoughts. I've been using it for a couple months now, so I'm gonna to talk to you about that and what my experience with it has been. And uh, at the end, I'll give you kind of my final thoughts. So if you wanna learn more about the Craft Fuel fridge freezer, stay tuned. I'll let you go. All right, guys, so I'm going to flip the camera around here and I'm going to kind of walk you around the fridge. I'm going to show you all the features of it. I'm going to also explain what exactly I had to assemble because there is a little bit of assembly required to put this thing together. But I just wanted to kind of, you know, again, give you clear expectations for what to expect if you were to pick up this fridge. So uh, a couple things that I had to install are the handles on the end, which is pretty typical for these fridges, as well as this sort of pop up handle that allows you to pull it around. This is one that is on wheels. So if you had like an open truck bed or something like that and you just wanted to slide it in and out this might be a good option for you but so i had to put the handles on both ends now there's really only like two bolts that go into each side that hold those on so it was really easy to put in pretty self-explanatory and then there's also some really nice instructions that come with it that helped as well now down here the wheels i also had to put on but again it was as simple as putting this big long screw into there and then tightening it down and then that has your wheels on other than that, that's pretty much all you have to do to put this thing together. Now on the front here, you've got two bottle openers, which is just kind of a nice feature to have if you like to drink beer or other adult beverages in glass bottles, that's kind of nice. On top here, you've got four little, they're really slight indents. So like I wouldn't count on them obviously to like keep your drink from tilting over, but it does keep them from just sort of sliding around if you know, you're know you on a little bit of a hill or something like that, which is kind of nice. It also seems to have these strap spots in it. Now I'm not 100% sure what these are for, but they're on all four corners. So my best guess is that I'm guessing that if you wanted to like strap this down into the back of your truck, so you didn't have to worry about it maybe popping open or, you know, hitting a bump and kind of coming open like that, then you could secure this thing down using those straps. Another option, just thinking outside the box here, is you may be able to put straps through it and then strap stuff to the top of it. So if you needed to attach something, you know, soft stuff, pillows, extra gear that you've got to carry, and you wanted to use these straps, you could use that for that. But if anybody knows what these are actually for, post up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you on what you think. As far as the latch goes, this is always one of my sort of sticking points with these things, right? A lot of these fridges, especially like the Chinese fridges and stuff, the latching mechanism is really sort of shoddy. On this one, you've got dual sort of hinges, I guess you would say, or dual teeth. You do sort of just, it's really nice and easy to, you know, pull from the middle here. One thing is that it doesn't go down on its own. It kind of clunks when you do that. So what I've been doing is just kind of pulling the handle out and then letting it secure itself like that. Just because I worry about, you know, potentially cracking these plastic hinges. But so far, I mean, it seems pretty stout. It seems to be pretty well made. And I like the dual hinges too. So just in case, if I did happen to break one of these, at least I have something that's still holding it shut. And the seal does seem to be pretty tight. When you look in here, you can see there is a nice sort of rubber liner here with a little indent in it. And that seats down on this lip on the edge here. So again, ensures a really nice sort of tight fit so you don't have the cold air kind of venting out. Now also on the inside here, there's a little lip. So again, that secures down inside of the lip of that. And then when you click it down, that keeps you nice and sealed so that it keeps the cold air in. Now another thing that's pretty unique about this is that it has this removable divider. So I like that because you have options, right? <clears throat> With most of these fridges, they are fixed. My JP50 is a good example of that and I'll show you here in a second. It's not removable. It's two separate sections. The one section back here isn't even cooled. It's just like a separate section that's kind of nothing above the compressor, but I really only have about this much room in my other fridge. Now this is a 60 quart fridge if you remove the divider. So you do lose a tiny bit of space if you leave the divider in, 
but I just think it's nice to have if you wanted to, you know, again, throw like drinks and stuff up here in this smaller side and then maybe your food down here or vice versa. Both sides are cooled, so I like that you get options as far as how to use it. So just for reference here, here is my Iceco JP50 fridge. And this is what I mean, right? There is no divider. It's just, it's a solid part of the fridge, which is fine. I usually keep, as you see, bottles of water back in here because they don't have to be super cold, but if they're cool, then that's kind of nice. But it's just sort of a fixed space and there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. So that's pretty unique and I like that. Another thing is like most fridges, it does have a light in it. Now the light is only on this side. So if you have the divider in and stuff, it is gonna make it a little bit tougher to see over there. Divider out, you can see the whole thing, which is pretty nice. But again, it's better than nothing. You're probably gonna have some sort of a headlamp or something on when you are coming to look in the fridge anyways. Now down here in the bottom, fairly standard, but there is a drain plug that is removable. So if you got water or spills or anything like that, you can wash it out and just drain it in the bottom and you are good to go, easy to clean out. So, but other than that, it's a pretty straightforward fridge, which I actually kind of like that it doesn't have too many crazy bells and whistles. It's a pretty straightforward 60 quart, good sized fridge. It's not too big, it's not too small. It'll hold plenty of stuff. And with the removable divider, it gives you a ton of options for how you can use this fridge. All right guys, so I did want to quickly sort of show you the display screen. I also wanted to show you sort of power output on startup. So it's about 65 degrees right now. I just turned this thing on. I've used this for the last few months, but on this trip, I wanted to not pre-cool it, not pre-chill it, not do any of that stuff. Just come out and literally turn it on and then see how fast it would cool and also what kind of power it pulls. Now, when it first starts up, it's around 25 to 30 watts. Right now though, after a few seconds, it started out at 55 degrees, it's cooled down to 53. The turbo mode is on, you'll notice from that light right there, which you can turn it on and off with this T button. And I'm gonna go through the rest of these uh, buttons here in a second. So if you're looking for help on how to control this thing, I will help you here in just a second. But right now on my BioLite, you can see we're pulling about 55 watts. So again, we're on startup, we're in turbo mode. It does say in the instructions that in turbo mode, it does pull a little bit more power. And you know, generally I will see 30-ish, maybe up to 40-ish with the turbo mode off, but with the turbo mode on, I am pulling mid 50s. So just FYI, this is a big power bank, so don't have any concerns about running that all night or anything. I actually, when I've used this before, I've run it for about three, four days at a time on this thing and still been in like the 70s, 70% 70 range on this. So it's actually a pretty efficient fridge. Now it is fall time, so it's not the hottest, so just something to keep in mind. Um, but let's kind of walk through these controls and how they work. So obviously you've got your power button that turns it on and off. Off. the nice thing is it does remember your settings so even when I unplug this and like take it in my house after a trip the next time three weeks later when I go back out and I plug it in it automatically kicks itself back on it remembers my temperature settings so like I've got it I turned it way down last time because I wanted to freeze some stuff well, let's set it at like 32 so I just wanted to get from 53 down to 32 the without hitting anything else as you just saw you can hit the plus and minus that will change your temperature that is your target for the fridge Again, this T button here is turbo mode on and off. When turbo mode is on, it's gonna suck a little bit more power, but it's gonna cool faster. So if you want it to get cool really fast, turn on the turbo mode. If you wanna save your battery a little bit, turn that off. Up above here is a light for uh, faults. And in the manual that comes with it, which is actually pretty comprehensive, it's a really nice sort of thick manual, which I was kind of surprised by. Um, but in there, in chapter nine, I believe, it does. it goes through all the trouble codes and kind of helps you out with that. If you do get a trouble code, which I've never had one before in the few months that I've been using this, um, but if you did see that light come on up there, check your manual to see what the code means. It should display it on the screen here. Now, the only other things that you can really do on this thing, which is actually kind of nice because it's super simple, is you can hit this mode button. You see that it's Fahrenheit there. You can change it between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I'm in America, so of course we do things the other way. So we're gonna leave it at Fahrenheit. So if you hit the mode button a second time, to get out of Fahrenheit and Celsius, then it's your battery protection. So this is basically how sensitive you wanna to be to protecting your battery. Now, again, I'm using an external power bank, so I don't really care if I run this thing down, I'm just gonna charge it when I get home. But if you were using like a deep cycle starter battery or a LifePo house battery or something like that, and you wanted to kind of protect your battery to make sure it wasn't gonna leave you stranded, then you could change this to high. So obviously the higher it is, the more sensitive it's gonna be. I keep mine on low because again, I don't really care, but there's low, medium, I don't know why it's any, but I believe that's the medium setting and then high. Um, but if you set it to high, then that means it's gonna be, it's gonna be more sensitive to killing your battery. So anyways, I'm gonna leave mine on Fahrenheit and I'm gonna leave it on low. Let me talk a little bit about the things that I like about the craft fuel, give you kind of my final thoughts about like when I think this might be a good use for you and when it might not. 
So if you are very sensitive to power consumption, if you don't have a big power bank or a, a house battery or some sort of a way to power a fridge without having to worry too much about if it's drawing too much power, uh, then this may be a little bit power thirsty for you. If you have a 100 or 200 amp hour uh, LifePo 4 house battery, then you could run this thing for a really long time without having to worry about it. As far as design goes, again, that's one of the things that drew me to this fridge is that it's really unique. So if you're kind of tired of having the same fridge as everybody else, which some people may be, right, then this may be a good option for you to have something that's a little bit different that maybe other people haven't seen or not everybody has, right? Um, as far as form factor goes for the thing, the fact that it's on wheels with a handle is pretty nice. So again, thinking people with pickup trucks or SUVs with enough room in the back to sort of slide it in and out, you don't have to spend the extra money. So like with my Iceco, there's a fridge slide that is about two, 250 bucks that you have to buy on top of the fridge itself to make it slide out. Whereas with this, with the wheels built in, you don't have to buy that extra stuff. You can just have the fridge kind of wheel it out, get access to your food, wheel it back in, and that would work. So if your setup is a pickup truck bed or the back of an SUV and you don't want to build a drawer system or don't want to build slides into your vehicle, you want to be able to remove it in between trips, then this may be a good option for you. Um, again, I think if you are big into cooking and you like to carry a lot of food and stuff like that, the removable section in the middle is really nice and gives you some flexibility as far as what you can carry. I mean, I've run into multiple times on my Iceco because of just the sort of nature of the way that it's set up and the not removable center section. If I had something that's really long or big or, you know, like ribs or something, if you had big stuff that's going to take up too much room, I have a tough time fitting stuff sometimes. Whereas with this, I feel like the space is a little bit more usable and the fact that you can remove that center uh, divider is really, really nice. Um, so then finally to wrap this up, let's talk about price a little bit. This does come in at about 500 bucks. So it's in the middle range, I would say for fridges. Like again, the Iceco JP50 is around that same amount, but doesn't come with the fridge slide and doesn't have wheels on it. So for me, I wanted to permanently mount mine. So I did get the fridge slide and I don't want wheels because I want it mounted in the back of my truck. Again, if you want it to be able to be removed from your vehicle, if you are not kind of like a full-time dedicated keeping a fridge in the back of your vehicle type of person, then this could be a good option for you. And again, based on the quality of the components and things like that, I'd put it in the middle too. So I would say that it's a good entry at the price point for that. Again, if you want something that's a little bit different and that has wheels and stuff on it. Now you could spend up to $1,200, $1,500, maybe more on like really, really nice name brand fridges. And those fridges are fantastic. Uh, if you're going to travel full time and live out of a van, maybe something like that's right for you. You make the investment up front. If you are looking at the really bottom of the basement, $200, $300 Chinese fridges, this thing does seem a lot higher quality than that and a lot nicer than those fridges. So again, if you want to kind of get in the middle, right, and the wheel slash handle setup fits for you, then this could be a great option for, you know, people looking in that middle range around the 500-ish mark. So that'll do it for my thoughts on the craft fuel fridge. I hope that was helpful for you, but if you have any questions, of course, post up in the comments down below. Happy to answer whatever you got. If you got value out of the video, click that like button. It really helps a lot. If you're not already, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Also in the description down below will be links to all my other social channels. So wherever you wanna hang out, I'd love to have you come hang out. And then there is also a link to my website where I've got funny overlanding and camping stickers and patches. So if you're into that kind of stuff, check that out. And then last but not least, there are links to my Patreon group where we do a 24 seven Discord. We all kind of chat 24 seven on Discord. And we do a once a month call where we hop on Zoom and we just kind of chat about our gear and upcoming trips and that sort of thing. And there's also the Newbie Overlanders Facebook group, which is totally free to join. So if you're newer to overlanding, and you want to learn more and you don't want to get bullied, definitely check out that group as well. But again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.